Welcome back to Jeff Outdoors. We're back in the Maple Shop. And a couple of updates for today. Today is Wednesday, uh, February 8th, 2023. We are in the middle of the beginnings of maple season. First week, runs of, these runs of sap just keep happening every day. And we're keeping track on the old maple board over here. Uh, so yesterday we had a run of 40 gallons, and then today we have a run of uh, 32.5. Uh, it dropped after one day because we had this little weird warm-up, and uh, sometimes that happens. When you get too warm too quick, that sap will just kind of dial down. It might even stop. We got like 60, 62 degrees coming up for tomorrow, Thursday. And Friday's looking pretty warm. I'm not really expecting too much sap the next couple of days. It, it'll be trickling out, and I could tell that it was slowing down today. We went from 40 to 32.5. You know, uh, that's almost a you know that's seven and a half gallons difference. That's you know that's pretty substantial. I am running 50 taps, and uh, most of which are just right around the shop area here. And then I have some over in the next township, uh, way over there that I'm gathering every day. So uh, we're keeping track on the maple board. I do have an addition this year to maple season. I'm gonna explain, explain it to you here. I'm excited about it. I think you should be too. <laughs> One second. So if you look in the middle there of the room, I have the, Set pan. All right, so this is a pre-warmer. This warms up the sap before you put it in the main pan. And you dial down, and you want to get this equal to about whatever you're burning off. So you're adding sap as you're burning it off, and you just get keep that going. So that's the pre-warmer. And just kind of out here doing some organizing, getting... Uh, some things cleaned up and uh, this next item is the item I am excited about because to be honest it's a little bit of a game changer for the small time maple man like myself and it would be this right here that thing with the handle on it <laughs> what in the world could this be? This is the lid to the main evaporation pan. Why would you want a lid, Jeff? Here's what happens. You load up your sap pan and your pre-warmer and you're, you're doing a 12 hour boil. You're boiling sap all day. Without the lid, at the end of the boil, when you wanna to try to finish up so you can go to bed at night or at least get in the kitchen and do your finishing boil and get everything bottled, you, without the lid, have to dial down that fire right now. And the bottom of that pan is subject to that heat. If you have no way to keep sap in there, as you're drawing off what you want to finish for the day, the bottom of that pan is subject to that heat and that heat will burn right through the pan, ruin your pan and maple season will be over. So what I did last year without this lid, there were, there were boils that I had to literally come over and take this pan off of the evaporator and carry it. And I have a couple of wood chopping blocks that I have out there by the evaporator that I would set the pan on. Well, the pan's hot. It's been under over fire all day. You risk splashing syrup. And uh, I did find a way to dial down from that, but I had, a, I had a boil last year that I just really didn't like. It was my first year with the wood fire evaporator. And 
uh, I didn't want to have to be lifting that pan off of the evaporator when I got hot, you know, hot sap or even near maple syrup inside the pan. So uh, I decided to, uh, I decided that I wasn't going to be doing that anymore. Hence the lid. So when you're boiling all day and it's getting late, you want to maybe get inside, do your finishing boil, get your bottling going for a nice little batch for the day. You're going to draw it off and you're going to flood that pan. Pan's flooded. It can't evaporate out of that pan. So now that's going to stay in there. It's not going to evaporate and it's going to protect that pan. And what you do is you go in, you finish, do your finishing boil in your kitchen uh, that night. And with that lid on top of that pan all night, you come out. In the morning, next day, take that lid off, start your fire, and start boiling. That simple. This is a game changer. And uh, this will uh, take, take things to a little bit of a next level. And I'm really excited about it. So uh, it is all stainless steel. And uh, maple equipment is not cheap. <laughs> So we got our pre-warmer main pan with the lid. Um, I do have a little bit of some gasket sealer stuff to go underneath the, the pan uh, this year to help kind of uh, uh, get rid of some cracks around the edge of the evaporator where the pan meets the front and back of the evaporator. So uh, maybe I'll show you that in the first boiling video. Uh, but that's where we're at. So uh, the sap is still running for this week. Um, Finishing this up, one other addition I have. I don't know if any of you are gardeners, but uh, the maple syrup process, maple syrup making process with a wood fired evaporator uh, produces a lot of ash. And I did go ahead and get myself an ash bucket that I'm gonna put right under the opening of the evaporator so I can scrape ash into this and seal it up for the night. And what I plan on doing with this is spreading it over the garden and the strawberry patch. Uh, so, a little tip there. You can turn your maple syrup season wood ash into uh, gardening additive and uh, keep things going. So, pretty excited about that. You know, other, other than those two little tiny things, and it's the little things that kind of make the difference, you know. Maple maple uh, syrup is a lot of work. And if if you have a little bit of an investment that you can do to make your life just a little bit easier, it makes it more fun. It does. Uh, I know a lot of people are out there with little makeshift shanties. They got some rock, they, you know, they got some uh, cement blocks out there with a, with a pan on it and you're boiling in the elements and stuff like that. It It's, that can be a little rough and you know, uh, depending on who you are, it could be a little discouraging, but I, I think everybody does it who maybe first starts getting into uh, maple syrup making. Uh, but any little thing that you can do to add a little bit of a convenience is is good. So uh, we got the lid, we got the pre-warmer ready to go. Uh, I am gonna bring the evaporator in and do a little bit of work on it and sizing with, with some of the gasket stuff I have coming in and the pan and make sure it's all fit and snug because Saturday morning, we'll be up early. The plan is be up around maybe four, 4.30, get my coffee in, get the coffee going, and then start chucking wood in the evaporator and get that, get that evaporator fired up maybe six, 6.30, seven, maybe seven, 7 a.m. and boil all day. So. I have two full 58 gallon barrels of sap sitting out by the evaporator site, uh, which is about 50 feet outside the shop here. And it's that's just from today, Tuesday, Monday, and some Sunday gathering. So not even a full day of uh, sap run on Sunday. That's like three and a half days of sap gathering. I have a hundred and uh, about 116 gallons of sap to boil down. And I'm running right now, uh, the last sap measurement I, I ran was about 38 to one with my sugar content. Sugar content 
uh, was about 2.25. I'm running Norway maple. I'm running red maple, silver maple, and sugar maple. So I've got a variety of maples tap. And yes, you can tap just about any maple. Just, uh, you know, maybe not a Japanese maple. I probably, I don't know one big enough that, that would be worthy of tapping or mature enough. So uh, other than that, you can tap just about any maple out there. So that's it. Okay, uh, back uh, from back from the, the uh, maple shop here and just checking in, maple season 2023. Uh, lots going on, very busy week. Keep up, stay tuned, hit like, subscribe. If it's your first time here, welcome to Jeff Outdoors. We'll see you on the next one. And boiling this Saturday. Giddy up.